says this, who is the one who condemned us? Christ Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty and more than that who was raised from the dead and who is at the right hand of God and is seating with the Father for us. Tonight we're going to examine the intercessional role. The role of the intercessor. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, O oh God, for just being God. We come before your throne repenting for sins known and unknown. Father, we ask that you forgive us, O oh God, as we come and lay out before your throne and to hear what it is that you want us to know concerning intercession. Lord, we ask that you forgive us if there's anything that God is not clean, pure, or right that will stop us, oh God, from hearing. Satan, we bind you and plead the blood of Jesus against you. You will not be able to hinder, stop, delay, or come against anything that God is doing at this hour and moment. We plead the blood of Jesus over each and every leader in this place, and we cover them up with the blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, in advance, for we know that you have already did it. You have already covered them. You have already protected them. You have already got them, oh God, where they need to be in you. And Lord, we just praise you for what you're doing and we give you glory. Father, I ask, oh God, as I decrease, you increase. Move by your spirit. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. As I said tonight, we're going to examine the intercessory role. When you think of an intercessor, many people um, we took that thing and just kind of threw it all out of context. The gift of intercession is something that God desired for every believer to have. Let me help you out on that one. It's not just for some of us, and not just for a few of us, but it's something that we're all supposed to have. Now, some of us are on different levels when it comes to intercession. Intercession, uh, as far as uh, intercessors, some are a little bit higher, some are, are right at the ground floor, and some of us is just learning how to intercede and how and the purpose of intercession. So the question goes out is, what is intercession? And why should it be done? The definition of intercession is this. It's the action of inventing I'm sorry, of an intervening on the behalf of another. An accession is the action of intervening on the behalf of another. Just as we just seen in our text that Jesus himself is sitting at the right hand of the Father intervening for us. Meaning that every time that you and I commit a sin, Jesus is reminding little God that he died for that sin too. Even the one that was just committed. This is the reason why that as a believer or unbeliever, you cannot do anything to get out of the good graces of God. Sin 
if when sin is committed, Jesus intercedes. Mm -hmm. He intervened because when sin is committed, the death penalty is 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 assigned to the one who have just sinned. Mm -hmm. But Jesus blocks it by His blood for what He had done on the cross mm -hmm. to stop us from have to deal with or the penalty of that sin. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a repossession of questions? Yes. You still have to deal with the reaping and sowing part. So what you sow, you also reap. Meaning that if I put it out there, then what's going to have to happen is I'm sowing negativity or I'm sowing this out. And what God wants to do is get me from that place. So we have to, what, we do, what he talked about on Sunday, Discipline on Wednesday, sorry. On Wednesday, the disciplining part to help you to stop sin, to get you out of that place of being a sinner, okay? So, another way of looking at this is like this. An intercessor blocks whatever fighting against another person. Or they deal with the backlash of it, okay? What does that mean? That means is that you block what the enemy is doing in his individual life. And after the individual gets set free from it, the enemy now attacks you from blocking him from getting to her. Does that make any sense? And a lot of times, that's what happens in our life, and we don't even recognize it. Because most intercessors, true intercessors, don't even know that they're interceding because it'd be like it's like it's like uh, preaching to me. It's like breathing. It becomes so simple, so easy, and you do it so fast, so quickly that you don't even realize what you just did in that moment. So you, you what you just did, you just step in, block the attack of the enemy, stop somebody from getting whatever the enemy was going to bring their way, mm -hmm. get them free. Now you're being attacked for what you just done. And you don't even know that you did it. All you did was simply pray. You didn't know the power of your prayer. You didn't understand that when you prayed, it made a difference. When you prayed, it shielded that individual. When you prayed on their behalf, just as Christ prayed on our behalf, the blood wall comes up and they're protected. When you pray, the blood wall comes up and they're protected because you pray. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. We can't take prayer as a small little thing. We make it out as if it's nothing. You know, and we start even, you know, when, you, when you're kids, you start the, oh, now I lay me down to sleep and I pray to the Lord of soul, my soul to keep me. And if I die, and if I wait, I pray to the Lord of soul to take. It's a great prayer. But at the same time, it's just repetition, you know, or the or the um, or, or, or the grace prayer when we pray over our food. What are we really praying? Are you listening to what you're saying? And you got to understand now, even in something as simple as that, what I just said, that the, the the go to sleep prayer, you just pray that if I die, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Now you got to understand something. What you're saying is that okay. I'm praying for protection for myself. And if I am not protected, then I'm asking the Lord to take me home. Mm. You got to understand that these prayers that we pray, even though they may be individual or they're small or they may seem small, they mean something. That's right. In the heavens, in the kingdom that you and I exist in, our words carry the power. It's not in what you do only. It's also in what you say. So when you say something about a life of somebody, God bless this man, God bless this woman, God help this person, God cover this person, God bless, uh, heal this person, God deliver this person. Whatever you saying, you have to understand that is a direct tip that you just spoken against the enemy to let that person free. So whatever sickness that you put on him, Satan, you got to let him go. Now, understand, once you did that, you just shield that individual, but you also step in front of it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you start to feel the sickness and the pains 
and the issues from the other person because you're interceding on their behalf. And many times we're immature in our, in our, 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 our intercession and we don't understand what it is that we're feeling. Mm. What you're feeling is not, and, and a lot of times we confuse it with us. And the reason why you confuse it with you because it is against you. Because mm. you, you're trying to get behind you to get the, the person that you're covering. So in order to get that person, they got to get you out the way. So the same attacks that he's trying to get this person, he'll, tr he'll throw them at you. Hopefully, you'll stop praying and move so that he can get them. Does that make any sense? Let's look at this a little further. I remember my girlfriend. I had a, a girlfriend at the time. She got into a fight with another female. And I jumped in to stop them from fighting. Okay? I was blocking them from hitting each other. But in me shilling my girlfriend, I got hit by the individual that was trying not to hit me, they were trying to hit her. So a lot of times, as an intercessor, that's what you're doing. Mm. You're shilling the individual, but you're going to get hit. And God allows you to get hit because guess what? If you're an intercessor, then you also have the power to endure whatever the enemy throw your way. Mm. So even though the enemy throwing darts at you, you're supposed to be in there with the full armor of God, so it should, it should be bouncing off of you every time he's throwing them. Mm. If you are affected, it's because you don't have the whole armor on. Mm. Doesn't mean you're not going to feel some of it. Yeah. Because just like a bulletproof vest, those that get shots, they don't, they, the bullet don't come through, but they still get bruised. Mm -hmm. So you will still feel some bruise, but it won't be as severe as it could be. And it wouldn't be as severe as it is to get to the for the other person because you stood in the way. You don't understand that you're saving lives. Mm. You don't understand that you're making a difference in somebody's life somewhere when you intercede. You don't understand how powerful your intercession is mm. and why it's needed so much. Because some nobody else is willing in today's world are willing to step in and lay their life down for another. Mm. Jesus did it. But guess what? Isn't he our example? So we have to be willing to lay our life down, meaning our time, our energy, our strength. Now, how many understand? Even tonight, I did not feel like doing this. Because I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm tired. But at the same time, I had to lay down my what I want to do what God wants. Because what somebody on this tape may need to hear this sooner than the moment, than when I was going to send it out. Because maybe tomorrow wouldn't came. Maybe I wouldn't have it, I wouldn't be able to get to this until next week. But somebody maybe needed it this week. So that's why our time is in his hand. The word of God said, my times are in his hand. Meaning that he controlled whatever time that I need to do whatever I need to do. That means if he decided to knock on my door at 3 o'clock and tell me even though I'm sleeping really good and I'm having a dream of hell, pick with somebody, they know what I'm talking about. Having a, uh, having a nice dream and he decided to wake me up out of the dream and say, I need you to pray, I have to pray. Regardless of how great the dream is. No matter how much sleep I want to get. Doesn't matter even if I went to bed late because my times are in his hand. So it doesn't mean if I, so even if I want to do my own thing, I got to be willing to put down my thing and pick up his thing anytime he calls. That's right. Does that make sense to anybody? Mm -hmm. So in that situation between the girlfriend and the other girl, I had to be prepared to, to I had to be prepared on, to fight on the behalf of the other. A lot of times what we do, we run into the fight unprepared. And if you run into the fight unprepared, just praying and not understanding to be prepared as you go in, mm -hmm. and many times you come out drained or come out hurting mm -hmm. because you didn't take the time to get prepared before you went in. You cannot just go in a fight without being prepared to fight. Think about it from a worldly standpoint. Anytime two women get ready to fight, they start taking the earrings off and they start to shine their face up and put the hair in ponytails or 
And if a guy get ready to fight, you know, he'll probably take his shirt off, kick his shoes off, or whatever it takes. What they're doing there is preparing mm. to fight. Anytime I was getting ready to fight, I would shake my hands. And I was preparing my hands to be loose, is what I call it. You have to be prepared. Now, that's a natural way. If we have to do something in the natural, why in the world would we have to do something in the spirit? In the spirit, you have to prepare yourself because you're going to war and don't even realize it. You're going head up against your enemy and don't even realize what you're about to do. We can't take it lightly. We can't take when somebody say, hey, man, could you pray for me? Yeah, I can pray for you. Give me a quick second to prepare myself. And not saying you have to tell them that, but you need to say it within yourself. God, prepare me to pray on the behalf of this individual. Because I know that I'm getting ready to go to war. And the worst that the, the, the worst that the enemy wants that person, the worse the fight is. The deeper they are in sin or the deeper they are away from God, the worse the enemy really don't want them to come. Unbelievers, oh my God, they're harder a lot of times. And for and backsliders, even harder. So you got to understand what you're doing. A backslider is considered gotten back from back from God to the enemy. Mm -hmm. And you saying, I'm coming back down here, snatching you from him, giving you back to God. My goodness. And you think he's going to stand there and watch it all take place without doing anything. It doesn't work like that. Okay? So understand the role, your role. Mm -hmm. The main reason, again, is because as Jesus Christ is before the Father, interceding on our behalf. Thank God for that. Praise God for that. Worship God for that. Our job is to be, be on the behalf of others to intercede for them. You have to understand the purpose of it all. Go to 1 Timothy 2 and 1. Your role is a serious role. Mm -hmm. Your role as leaders is important. Now, if I was in a regular church, I'd preach the same. When I was dealing with just regular kind of church, I'd do the same. But as leaders, I expect more. And God expects more. That's right. Because in order for us to lead, we got to be worthy to be followed. That's right. And in order to be worthy to be followed, you got to be following me. In order to be followed, you got to be following me. So if I'm following Christ, then it's easy for others to follow me. Make any sense? Very important. First Timothy 2 and 1 says this. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayer, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. We got to remember now. To praise God when interceding as well. We, that's the missing key a lot of times. You want to get that praise in there. Okay? What I used to do, I used to turn on worship music and worship God before I did pray afterwards. Now, I understand it's a little bit different when somebody is running your face asking you to pray. But if I got to go before the throne of God and I'm like in my house by myself or whatever not, then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little bit of worshiping, get into the presence of God, and then I'm going to pray. Mm -hmm. Because that's the praise that goes with the worshiping, that goes with the inner season, inner season that will cause the prayer to be more effective. Okay? I, 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 the, the praise also bring God into the fight with me. I'm not going down here by myself. <laughs> Jesus already know the route. He went and came back out. He already took the key from the devil. He already know how to do this. So if I'm going to go with anybody, I'd rather I would go with somebody that already know how to do what I'm doing. Does it make sense to anybody? Go to Romans 8, 26. So let's keep, so remember now, so in our intercession, we're going to have to grab, we grab hold and move through our worship as well. Make sure we praise and worship in God. Even if you do it for a few moments, so make sure you worship and praising God. 
Your praise is that I'm but you believe in God that this that you got the victory for this individual. I'm praying for that brother that asked me to pray for them, but I'm praising you, God, that that, per, that brother that you that, that asked me to pray for him got the victory already. I already believe that they're set free. I already believe that the very thing that they believe in you for is already given to them. So I'm praising you now for it. Mm. I'm worshiping you now for it. Before I even ask, I'm worshiping you for it. Come on, somebody. Mm. 826 says this. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. An intercessor always pray, always should be praying in the Spirit on the behalf of others in their selves. There, you have to let your Spirit flow when it comes to uh, praying. Because it knows what you ought to pray for. In, this, in most cases, it's the things that you don't even know. I, you'd be surprised what that's your spirit is praying for. I've done it once before. I was praying, and I started speaking in tongues. I started praying in the spirit. And, you know, I was a curious being back in the day. I was so curious. I said, my God, what... What did I, what did I pray about? Because I'm, 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 I hear the tongues flowing, da 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 da. I hear the tongues, but what did I say? I don't know what the tongues are saying. What is I saying? And it says, and it said, the spirit of God was was just praying for protection from you tomorrow when you get in the car and you be on mm. I 50, I 20. The enemy have already set up another car to run in front of you. Mm. Whoa! I didn't even know that. But the Spirit does. This is why it's so important to pray in the Spirit. You don't know what the enemy got set for this individual. And you don't know what he has set for you. And the, But the Spirit of God knows. And so you want to pray that those things are blocked. And how you pray this thing is praying in the Spirit. Ephesians 6 and 18. It's extremely important that we get it, that we understand. If you have not, if you not have developed your, your your tongues, keep coming, keep trying, keep speaking, and eventually it will start to flow on you. It will start to fall on you, and it get to a point where you'll be able to turn it on and turn it off at any time. I know a lot of times when we pray, a lot of people feel that okay, well, if I pray, then. Uh, I pray hard enough and then eventually it comes. No, eventually it becomes like a switch. You can turn it off and on. It goes down a little shine, it doesn't go on that, it does a little shine, and I can go right back talking to you. I can turn it on and off. And you got to know, and that's because I, I prayed in the Spirit a lot. I prayed in the Spirit a lot. So you have to know when to pray in the Spirit. I will wake up in the middle of the night and start praying in the Spirit. Don't know what's going on? Don't necessarily have to know. But the Spirit of God does. And I trust that it's going to talk and speak on the thing that I that, that's going to happen later on that got me covered. Amen? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6 and 18 says this. Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And in this sense, you have to pray for the people who, that, who, I mean, you got to pray for the people that don't deserve it too. Oh boy. Many times what we what we do is we feel we pick and choose who we should and should not pray for. It's not your choice, it's God's choice. God chooses for who you to pray for. And, and you don't ever want to be on the other side of that. Because just as you refuse to pray for somebody, you gotta remember me. We we so. So when that person's supposed to pray for you, they don't. Because you so you you sold out there and not praying for somebody else, so don't want to pick and choose. Let me help you out. An intercessor is always praying for somebody they don't like. An intercessor is always praying for somebody that's usually an enemy. And the reason why God teaches you to pray for your enemy because the Word of God told us to. So He teaches us to pray for people that you wouldn't ordinarily want to pray for. 
It's like I'm not going to I'm going to hold that back. But that's like that's like Jesus said, I'm only interceding for so many people because I, I don't want to see for her. Mm. That would be horrible. I don't want her, I want her to go straight to hell. I don't want nothing to happen for her. That's really bad. We don't want to ever be on, the, on that side. Amen? Amen. Matthew 5 and 43. It says, you have heard that it was said, you should love your neighbor, your fellow man, and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love that is unselfishly seek the best or the higher good for your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you, so that they may show your, so you may show yourselves to be children of your father. Those that pick and choose are not children of God. But it, it says those that does, those that pray for the enemy are children of God, who is in heaven. But he make his son to rise on what? The evil as well as the good. He make his rain falls on the righteous as well as the unrighteous. God doesn't discriminate. Neither should you and I. Not praying for that right now. No. No. I'm not praying for him. I'm not praying for her. I'm not praying for my boss. But maybe that's why your boss keep back in the fool on you. Because you refuse to pray for him. Mm. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about maybe you if you pray for him, it'll change the whole atmosphere? You ever thought that maybe you'll pray that they'll handle the situation differently? I remember having a boss when I was younger. I remember having a boss. And, and he was a mean joker. This joke was mean, man. He was, and they would stop the line. You know, I used to work at the plant. They would stop the line. Oh my God, boy, you would think that somebody came in there with a gun. You can't stop that line. Mm. And I would, I, would, I, would, I would hear him coming and he would be screaming and yelling at everybody on the line. And he fussing and whatever or not. And I said, you know, I remember him coming and I said, you know what? Father God, I'm going to put this to the test. Because you said pray for my enemy. And it seemed like he would love to come play with us. Because I was really young at the time. I was just about 18, 19 years old. And I was really young at the time. And remember, we went in there. We was goofing off. We wasn't really working. We was goofing off. We were playing. And, but I knew something about God. I was still learning. I was, like I, I was new in God. And I was still learning. And I said, okay, God. I pray that this man will not get frustrated none this week. I pray that he, he that you will give him peace, you'll keep him calm, you'll keep him relaxed. Father God, I pray that whatever pressures and stress that he is dealing with, that it will be broken off in him. And that he would not be concerned or worry about nothing that would happen if this line stopped this week. It didn't stop Monday. Line didn't stop Tuesday. By Wednesday, the learning was going off. This is the line stop. And I see him coming. He's coming. But this time he ain't saying anything. This time he's, I can see him saying something to somebody. See him saying something to him. When he finally got to me, he was like, what's wrong? Is everything all right? What's going on? Why, why, why the line ain't moving? I said, well, we, they forgot this car. He said, okay, come on now. Let's go ahead and get this car done. What? <laughs> normally he had, normally, normally he had said something about your mama by now. He would cuss to call you every type of names. Ever. None of that. The power of prayer. You have to learn to understand that you need to pray for those that come against you. Not to fight back against them. Not to ball up your fist because you can do more damage to the spirit that's operating in them using God's word than you ever could with your fist. You got to know how to operate when it comes to those things. Go to Isaiah 53 and 12. I'm moving fast. It's, it's important that we learn to pray about all things and not just some things. And to understand the role of our Father Jesus who are doing these things on our behalf. You don't think that Jesus had to pray about some things that you do? You're a sadly mistaken. You don't think that Jesus had to pray about some things that I do? You're sadly mistaken. He had to intercede on our behalf. God, don't get mad. Okay, okay, go and look at the blood. Don't look at them. Look at the blood, Lord. Look at the blood. They goofing off again. They messing up again. They blowing it again. They dropping the ball again. But look at the blood. Remember what I did? Come on now. It says Isaiah 53. I will give him the honor of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. Talking about Jesus. He, have, he was counted among the rebels. 
He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. He interceded for the bad as well as the good. So you got to understand that Jesus don't, he, he ain't up there discriminating. He's not up there saying, God, that man white, I ain't doing that. Well, he was up there saying, oh, this man is black, I ain't doing that. Well, this man is Chinese, I ain't doing that. He ain't up there in this, doing that, interceding and saying, no, Lord, I died for every one of them. And I want all of them to make it in and none of them perish. We have to feel the same way. So that means sometimes you got to go in knowing that I'm going to take a few blows for that person. But if it saves their soul, it may, I may be hurt for a day or two, but it's going to fade away. But what, isn't, it, isn't it okay if, it, if I'm hurt for two days and it keep them from being eternally damned? I mean, think about it. Sometimes we got to understand the cost of what we're doing is not as big as the soul that we're saving. We look at this thing as, oh man, I you know, I you know, I'm sure I had 30 minutes. I was gonna, I was gonna uh, make me some nachos. I need you to pray for those 30 minutes. You trying to tell me that person's soul ain't worth a, a, a bowl of nachos? What did Jesus have that same that thing feeling? He said, wait a minute, no, no, anybody hitting me? I ain't doing it. I ain't doing none of it. None of them jokes is worth none of this. And guess what? None of us was. None of us was worth saving. None of us was worth going, making the end. None of us. And not nothing you did, nothing you ever could have done that made God say, you know what? I, 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 that one right there. No. Every one of us is like, none of them deserve it. However, I care. However, I love. And that's what we have to get back to as people of God of caring and loving. Mm. The church don't show love and care no more. That's why the people don't want to come to it no more. Where's the love and the care at? Nobody care anymore. It's like whatever. This is why so much can go on in the church. That's why so much stuff, that's why somebody can come in and rob the church because there's there was no love shown. Shown. When is love shown? Shown? A lot of times they can see. The, pre the love of God. And it's hard to stick up somebody that has the heart of God. Mm. Has the presence of God. I remember in my day, someone did try to come and stick up a church that we were saying. Mm. And a prophet stood there. And she said, I know what you came to do tonight. But you're not going to be able to do it. Because the presence of God is too heavy here. If anything, you're going to give your life to God. The boy dropped the gun and ran back out the door. Prophet, why need to buy him? She did. She was standing right in our church. You got to understand the power of God and the love of God. We don't see this stuff anymore. What we hear now, they walk right in the church and pop, pop. Walk right in the church and take people, chain, whatever. It don't make no difference no more. Why? What is happened to the anointing? Did God move it? It can't be gone. Because if it's gone, then many of us would be gone too. He said he removed his spirit once his people are, have been exceeded at the rapture. That's when God's spirit goes away. So his spirit is still here. We're just not revealing it. We're not showing it. We have to learn to show it through our intercession of praying for somebody, caring for somebody, loving on somebody. Mm. Come on, somebody. Go to John 17. I'll give y'all time to get it out. I really want you to hear this. There is a difference. An intercession has the heart of God. They have a heart just like God has. And they care for that person just like God cares for them. They don't see that person through the lens of their own personal view. They see them through the lens of God. See, I can, I can look at, see, if I don't like you, then I'm only don't like you based on what I, how I feel personally about you. But if I look at you and do the lens of God, God loves you. So the question is, who is bigger in me, me or God? That's right. And if God is bigger in me, then I can only see you through God. But if I'm bigger than me, than God in me, then I can only see you as an enemy. And it's really hard for me to pray for you because I don't see you as anything but what I feel about you. 
But I got to click out of me and I have to learn to turn me off so that God can have his way. I am a willing vessel that to be used by God at any time. God reserved the right to use me whenever he feel like it. And I don't have any say so. If I do try to say so, then that is my opinion. And my opinion cannot trump the truth of God or the word of God. And if it does, then I'm in the wrong place. That means I'm a king on my own throne, of my own heart, and not God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Look, at, look at Jesus. John 17 and 1. Jesus is on the cross. And this was his last prayer here on earth. It says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that the son may glory you. Since you have given me authority over all the flesh, this is not, it, it, what it said, didn't it say all flesh? It didn't say color, a certain color. To give eternal life to all who you have given him. And this is not the eternal life that they know you. The one true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, God, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. God, if, you, if I'm going to go out, this is how you go out. Mm. Listen to the words that he said. If, I, if I'm finished, if I'm done, this is how I'm supposed to be speaking at the end. I've done what you told me to do. I glorified you on earth. And now, Father, glorify me as you promised in your word. In your presence with the glory that had you had, that I had with you before the world even existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of this world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me. And they have received them and have come to know the truth that I came from you. And that they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. Look at this. I am not praying for the world. But for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All minds are yours and yours are mine and I'm glorified in them. And I am no longer in this world, but, that it, but, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. While I was with, with them, I kept them in your name, which you gave me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, which was Judas, that the scriptures may be fulfilled. That's the only reason why. So I didn't fail. This was, this was something you already wanted to happen. But now I come into you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have, that they may ha, may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word, and in the world have hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of this world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as men are not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth of your, of your word. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. Begin of his disciples. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask these on this, I do not ask for these only, not just this once here, but for all but for all, for those who would believe in me through your word. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, in me, and I am in you. They also may be in us, 
so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them. That they may be, may be one even as we are one. I in them and you in them and you and me. That they may become perfect, perfectly one. So that the world may know that you sent me. And love them even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also know you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know you that have, you have sent me. I have made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love which you have loved me may be in them and I in That's how you pray. The same ones that's down there talking about crucify him. The same one that denied him three times before the clock broke. The same one that ran off and left him in the garden to be crucified. The same one that sat at the table and, and sold him for silver. Here he is praying. Laid out before God praying. Stressed out on the cross, praying for all of us. He didn't have to do it. I mean, he could be sitting up there just as mad as he could be. Look what they did to me. Look at the nails in my hand. Look at this thing on my head. I asked them for some water and they gave me vinegar. They pierced me in my side. I'm standing here naked, embarrassed. Yet it's still, after all of that, he's still interceding for you. How dare us ever not intercede for another person? How could we? How could you ever be comfortable with that? There's something wrong with your heart if you can do something like that. Go to James 5 and 16. It says, therefore, confess your sin one to another. Your false steps are in your offense. Pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and, and, and persistent prayer of a righteous man, the Bible says, that person can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God in the dynamics and can make tremendous power. That righteous person has some serious power when it comes to praying. You want to seek out that person when you need someone to pray for you. That righteous person will bring in thunder and power when they pray with you and pray for you. You want to search them out. Come on, stay. The power of intercession is definitely something that we all have to operate in. God did not give us this power just to have it. He didn't give you his spirit that can speak about things that you know nothing about so that you cannot use it. You got that spirit for a reason. The question is, what are you going to do with it? You as leaders, I pray that you use it here in the ministry. Not only in the ministry, but I want you to represent the ministry outside of the ministry. And then when anybody ever asks you to pray, that you remember that God called you to be the intercessor. And the reason why you have to pray Last week I told you because somebody's somewhere praying for you. But guess what? Can I reveal to you who praying for you? Jesus, who sits on the right hand of the Father, is the one who's interceding on your behalf. Father God, we come. 
before your throne. And we repent for sins known and unknown. Lord, we ask, oh God, that we will walk in this, that we will move in this, that we will flow in this, that we will be the intercessors you call us to be. Father, we ask for your forgiveness if we fail in any arena in this. So we, for we did not know. Now we know how it is and why it is so important that we intercede on the behalf of others. And even the title of a leader, let us never forget that we're not a leader just because a man called us leader. We were leaders the moment we came into this world. So as a leader, help me to lead by following you. To be a great leader, I have to be a great follower. Help me and help us to follow you completely. Lord, we praise you. We lift you up and we give you glory. In Jesus' name. you come back we got one more part for the inner the art of praying and then we'll move into our next subject um i want you to come back uh if not next week the week after next and we're going to go into the final part of the art of prayer i pray that you're getting something i pray that you got something out of this i'm actually praising god I believe that you receive. I'm praising God that this has changed your life and this has given you the tools necessary to, to be comfortable in praying for others. I want you to go back to part one. Actually, part two came went out today, but the prophecy kind of threw it on my I, I didn't know they both would come out the same day. But it's okay. I'm gonna I'll send it out tomorrow to everybody. Again, for those that didn't sneak it, some people already probably already looked at it. But for those that didn't, I'm going to send it out anyway because everyone needs to hear this. But I need you as leaders to take heed to this word, to take heed to what God is teaching us so that we can be better. So that when they come in and as they come in, we can train them, teach them, show them exactly what it is to be like Christ, our example. We'll see you in the next one. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah.